Russians drive for Berlin. Thousands of Russian tanks crush Nazi resistance and German dead litter the roads as the Great Red Army sweeps from East Prussia and Poland to a bridgehead across the Oder River in the Reich, taking thousands of prisoners. The Russians, remembering their own countryside, laid waste by the Germans, smash straight to the heart of Prussia. On the way, they encounter a reminder of a bygone day. A gap less than the distance between New York and Washington separates the Russian and Allied armies. It's closing rapidly. These 500-pound incendiary bombs were made especially for Japan. This quaint-looking jellyfish contains enough gasoline to spread fire of 1,000 degrees over 30 square yards. When dropped from a plane, it pancakes and spreads consuming flame like a fountain. Ravaged Tokyo and Nagoya's flimsy buildings know its effectiveness. At Elwood Arsenal, Maryland, the bombs are undergoing further tests. Pilots in the Pacific found the bombs particularly useful in burning out Japs during pre-invasion attacks. They burn fiercely for eight to 10 minutes, and even rocks crack under their heat. When Jap cities go up in smoke, old M69 will be in there pitching. Three leaders of industry and labor meet in Washington to frame and sign a new charter for cooperation in post-war America. AFL President William Green signs for his organization in the presence of interested spectators. CIO President Philip Murray adds his signature. And United States Chamber of Commerce President Eric Johnson signs for industry. The document represents a milestone in industrial relations. Mr. Johnson expresses his hopes for the code. We do not pretend that this charter of management and labor is a perfect one. There are many improvements that can and must be made. We're each trying to protect America in our own way. Our boys and our sons and brothers are doing it with bayonets and bombs on the battlefields of the world. We in production are doing it with machines and goods. But we must do more than physically protect America. We must also protect the ideals for which America stands. Freedom, equality of opportunity, democratic institutions that will bring our people closer together in the post-war period and that will mean a stronger, a better America. Enemy planes swoop in to attack a force of our ships. A Navy cameraman shows one attacker shot down in flames. Wave after wave of dive bombers try for a kill. But before they are driven off, one of our munition ships is hit. Stanton Walker introduces Fong Oi, one of the ten winners from the radio program On Stage Everybody, to be awarded motion picture contracts. Another is Strawberry Russell, also picked from the 4,000 who auditioned. Bob Hopkins and his impersonations won him a place. The lucky ones will all be in a picture version of On Stage Everybody. Karloff will have competition from Cyril Smith. 
All professionals, these new personalities have a bright career before them. C.D. Prutzman hands out contracts for Universal Pictures, and Georgiana Bannister is a lucky young miss. Billy Usher, a vocalist. Lovely Ronnie Gibson, Hollywood bound. Gene Hamilton, talented pianist. And finally, Eileen Woods, a network star. They're all for Hollywood, and they'll be seeing you. For real genuine slugging, it's hard to outsmack the U.S. Navy. That's true even when they decide to outsmack each other. Here, Wynn, the soccer with the wave, representing Pier 88, and McCormick of Pier 92. Uh, hold it a minute, folks. It looks like it might be all over. <laughs> No, 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 Wynn's right back in the fight. This battle is real. Wynn socks Mac right back and the war is on again. <laughs> Lucky Signal Corps cameramen caught this slugfest as Navy salvage school boxers tangled with receiving station leather throwers at New York. And folks, the winner, Curly Wynn, but not quite like taking candy from a baby. If you're looking for action, here's the place to find it. This next bout is strictly from murder. Mahan of Pier 88 starts trading sudden death with Wilby of Pier 92. And it's out of this world for Wilby. <laughs> Wilby's back in there, and both are plenty tough, but Mahan has the edge. worse than it does them, uh, or rather than it does Mayhem. Nah, it's good news tonight for Pier 88, as Wilby accentuates the negative. 